I was living over in a more isolated valley actually, north of Cairn River for three years. And several things happened, including 1983 bushfires. Everything was just saying move. So I ended up here because I knew people at that time over here. So I moved lock, stock and barrel, all my animals, Clydesdales, <laughs> dogs, goats. At the time, I think I had 5,000 in the bank from the sale of the land at Can River that I went into with friends. It was only 13,000 to buy this place back then. Um, but I worked up the Snowy River National Park as a track cutter. I was actually the leading hand for six months and then I got a job with the Shire as a builder's labourer. With that 13,000 that I had to buy this place with, I just had enough left over with the change to buy a chainsaw and a roll of poly pipe. I had to put some paddocks in because there was only two fences on the place. I had the teepee up, which the Shire, well, the council regs, I think anywhere, allows people to live in a tent on their property, thinking that no one's going to live in a tent for very long because it's not very comfortable. So I built a bark hut over there, which is still standing, dirt floor, round poles again. Pretty simple, primitive living for a little while. Lived in the bark hut there with the teepee out the front, just, you know, the Shire knew that I knew that they knew that they did that. But they got on to me and um, again started to harass me. So I put the plans in for this place and they were just absolutely stonkered. They didn't know what to do because they'd never come across a house that was built out of round poles and slab logs and you know <laughs> all the pioneer techniques. So they looked at it and scratched their heads and just made me make every, every piece of wood an inch or two bigger, like six inch beams and now eight inch beams and that sort of thing. This little um, 22 acres, it followed the river, so it's long and narrow, but it had no trees on it. It had lots of blackberries, lots of swamp reed, and it was cleared right up to the river's edge as farmers used to do back in the bad old days. I was starting off basically with a blank canvas which was good because, you know, I thought I'd put a row of trees there and I'll put the shed there and there I'll put the fence and I'll, you know. So it was like playing with a farmyard set as you would with a kid. I've had fun over the last 35 years. And every time a friend turned up, I'd <laughs> and say, what do you do all day? I'd say, Get on the end of that half ton pole and I'll show you, you know. So have to get help putting these big big poles up and very basic. All the windows were second hand from the tip. Doors. Floorboards and the tin were the only thing that really cost me and that was all up at about three thousand dollars to build the build the whole house. And I used a lot of early settler inspired building techniques like cowpoo and lime for plugging up a lot of the odd odd shapes around the place. And lime and sand to plaster the inside walls. I didn't need a lot of money to start with, and I still don't. So it was very easy to get by on very little. Um, I've been doing freelance writing and cartooning. Um, I get a small honorarium from a volunteer group that I coordinate.
now I've built a little um, eco accommodation place and that gives me more than I need to pay the rates and buy animal feed so I can actually afford chocolate now. There's no um, tradies just around the corner here so you kind of have to make do and yeah be a bit resourceful with what you have. But it forces you to learn these skills too because you can't just, you know, rely on somebody else that can come and do it for you all the time. So you become a bit of a, <laughs> a lay plumber, a lay electrician, and carpenter, <laughs> and mechanic. It's a living example of a environmentally sustainable small living space. It's actually an educational experience as well. And a lot of people have said to me, you know, that they didn't realise how much more they could do to, to reduce their impact on the planet. They say, where can we find these soap shakers instead of, you know, detergent in a plastic bottle and all the old fashioned things that are just really simple, like a hot water bottle instead of an electric blanket, <laughs> you know that people have just forgotten about, you know, tea in a teapot instead of tea bags and all the waste that goes with tea bags. Um, yeah, just very simple little things that I like to encourage. Compost bucket. It wasn't that expensive to build, actually. A lot of it's recycled timber, the recycled beams, um, trees that fell down on the property, second-hand cupboard doors, um, second-hand stove. And I make a thing of that too because, you know, it's all, it's all recycled timber. Nothing's been cut down to build this place with. Okay, nearly ready. A lot of it is just going out and looking at how things are done. Like when I first started doing um, round pole construction, it, that was book like early settlers guides and, and going out and looking at, at actual historic buildings and how they put things together and twitch poles together with wire or wooden pegs and that sort of thing. And I think once you've played with wood a bit, you kind of learn the language of wood. I certainly love learning from other people who know their stuff, yeah. I designed it and um, I was the builder's labourer for this one. I was left a little bit of money so I thought, better than sitting in the bank, I'd do something useful with it. I think that's a big part too, of, is the aesthetics of whatever you create. It's not just, bang, it's a box that's going to keep the rain off. It's got to look good and you've got to be happy with looking at it for the years to come or however long. I lived here for eight years in this little hut without electricity or running water. That was a good life. <laughs> exactly what I ought to always wanted to do was just live somewhere on my own, build a little hut and, and have all my animals around. And I didn't mind the getting up at six o'clock to put a corner post in. And <laughs> I just loved the work. I loved living as I was living. Very minimal impact. I just used to go out with a bucket of hot water at night and a flannel. And I think it's the nicest washes I've ever had, is to go out in the cold night air and then with hot water, just sluice yourself. I've done a little bit of exploring and adventuring in my earlier life and I'm pretty content now to sit here. Like, what more could you want? It's a beautiful little valley. It's everything I ever aimed for in my life. And my idea of a holiday is to take the phone off the hook and unplug the internet.